regard. I, I think there's movement in the body of Christ right now. I believe that we are getting positioned. I believe that this big mega church thing is dying and doing its rightful death. That if you have a mega church and you've got people coming from 10 different cities, you should break it into 10 churches. And you should start a city movement. That's what I believe. I believe you need to have cities uh, with churches in them and start to do the work of the gospel, the Great Commission in each city. I mean, that makes sense, right? I mean, that's in the Word of God. I mean, mega church is not in the Word of God. That Paul appointed elders in every city. There was distinct cities, churches that dealt with each city. So if, 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 if the church in America is dead, and it is pretty close to dead, the individual is now searching for God. He's without a shepherd. Now it's time to start gathering the elect. Now it's time to start gathering those people who really care about the things of God and start to build from the ground level a new work. That's how we're going to survive up until this time when Babylon is destroyed. Some of us are going to die because of persecution, because we're martyrs. Do you know that I had communion with the Lord earlier today? And the one thing that uh, the Lord gave me is that His blood, moving into the righteousness of that blood that He shed for us, and what it secured for us is grace to become a martyr. The blood of the martyrs will stream in the streets of Babylon and all over this world. Even today, the darkness over these nations, over these continents, the Muslim uh, band of, of darkness, where they persecute God's people and they shed their blood in China, in Russia, in the old Soviet Union, Places all over this world where Christianity, true, living, organic, real Christianity is being um, fought by the government. That's why Paul said we're supposed to pray for kings and leaders. It doesn't matter what they are, what they say they are, Republican, Democrat, parliamentary, if they're socialists. It doesn't matter if they're communists. Just pray for them. Why? So that we may live a quiet and peaceable life. It doesn't say that we'll get political power and have uh, influence in Washington, D.C. That's that's God's business. If he wants to raise up a senator that's born again and truly loves Jesus and he wants to help poor Christians, great, wonderful. But that's not the goal of this New Testament church. It is to care for the saints, the people of God. And God can save a senator just by me preaching the gospel and then they stay in the calling where they were called. It's not to climb the ladder and think that now I'm doing something just because I'm in Washington, D.C. and I've got a place, I've got a seat in Washington, D.C. That's not the plan of God. You should not, I mean, I know we're supposed to invade society, but that in and of itself is not going to change. It's not working. I mean, we tried that. Jerry Falwell, Pat Robertson, you know, they've got their colleges and their goal is to Christianize America. It's not working. It's getting worse every year. What's wrong is we're not doing the Great Commission. We're doing programs. We're talking about this leader, that leader, his words, this one's words. You know, did you go to that conference? Wow, what a great experience. But what is it really doing for you? Some people are rising up. But at the end of the day, let's get honest. What is really going on in you? Are you going to stand alone for God if you have to? Are you the kind of person that God's having dealings with that can stand in times of tribulation like John in the Isle of Patmos having, after having been dipped in burning hot oil, his whole body, he's probably somebody you wouldn't even want to look at, a hideous sight, but he was a man who survived that and then gave us revelation. Praise God for his endurance. And at the end of all of these discussions about this ministry versus that ministry, it's either in God or it's not. Either you are operating in the apostolic function or not. Either you're really called to be a prophet or not. Whether this group recognizes you or not doesn't matter. The people of God who are in the presence of God on a continual basis, we'll know if they're hearing the words of God. That's the bottom line. And what the Lord is laying on my heart today is that Babylon 
is controlling our church, the Church of Jesus Christ. We are sick. We got cancer. We're not good, uh, good looking. We're not a pretty bride. We've become a whore. We have whored after all of these gods. That's the fact. You say, well, Jonathan, you're a whore. We are a whore. Think about your own personal life. Is Jesus Christ primarily your chief delight? Or do you get just excited about, you know, more excited about when your team wins? Or when you just sold a big deal? Or your kid does something great, gets an A. And, it, and that gets you more excited than Jesus Christ. He saved your soul from hell. He deserves all of you, not a piece of you. You know that what I'm saying is true. It's just you have not got to that place yet because you're afraid to break away from culture. You don't know how. I'm telling you, it's hard. But when you do it, you get filled up with Jesus Christ. You are then filled with the Holy Spirit. Be being filled with the Holy Spirit ministering to one another, psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, Colossians 3.16. How can you get like that unless you're like operating in the way of Colossae Church where they had house-to-house -house encouragement and exhortation, where they had love feasts, where they had joy of the Lord going on all the time. How are you going to get there? Well, Peter says in chapter uh, 1, Peter he says, therefore, put aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all slander. Is that not what runs most places called church today? And he says, like a newborn baby, long anticipate with great eagerness the pure milk of the Word of God. Do you read this word as an instruction manual to know what to do? See, I'm even like thinking about these the, the classroom side of things, you know, the seminary side of things. Jesus wouldn't do seminary. It's not to say that there isn't a place for the classroom. But wouldn't it be great to do the classroom and then get up and do what the class was, was about? If you're talking about casting out demons, let's go cast out some demons. We'll talk about the fact that there are demons, the fact that they fill up people, even Christians, and that we need by the power of God, by the dominion that Jesus gave us, the dominion mandate, the kingdom mandate, to invade and cast out demons out of people. We learn about it, and then we do it. That's the best way. That's the best way to teach. Talk about healing, do the same thing. Talk about preaching, go out and preach. You talk about, you know, teaching anything, then you go do what you're teaching. That's the way to teach. That's the way to be. That's the rabbinical way, the Jewish way. Uh, method of training people. He says, like a newborn baby, long for the pure milk of the word, so that by it, what? The word. How are you going to look at this? It is the word, this pure milk of God. This word is what you need. This is your nourishment. So that you may grow in respect to salvation. See, this once saved, always saved teaching is not in the Bible. We believe that a truly born-again person perseveres to the end. But how do I know you're born again? Because you persevere. Because you desire the pure milk of the Word of God. Because you're like a thirsty and hungry baby. You're longing just for the Word of God. You're not looking for personality. You're not looking for social. You're not looking for you know, business connections. You're just looking for the Word of God. You're hungry for God. Because he says in verse 3, if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. If you've never tasted that the Lord is good and known of his mercy and known of his love and known of his tenderness and known of his nearness, if you've never had an experience of the depths of the mercy of God, then you won't desire the pure milk of the word. So then what's the next step? If you've come to see that this crazy guy, you know, out here in Pilot Mountain on his property is saying to you, 